what's up guys welcome back to another video hope you're doing well today i am about to show you the best nationals track that has ever been made in mx bikes it is glen helen for legal reasons it's not glen helen but it is glen helen the 2007 version when it goes all the way out off into the distance and the track is just absolutely huge first of all if i put the camera anywhere we can take screenshots of this it looks absolutely beautiful of course it's a JV creation, as they all are at this point, like the, the best tracks in the game. The man's got it down to just a fine art at this point. I have already spun about four laps around here uh, just because I, I needed to get the track under my belt. This isn't one that you just jump into. Now, there's a disclaimer on this track. This is the best track or best national track in the game for me. And the reason I will show you why it's going to be a controversial opinion is if we go around here and we go to the very, very first downhill, She's not smooth. She is a rough old girl. And unfortunately, a lot of people in the uh, community do like their tracks to be silky smooth. This is not one of them. This track will be brutal. However, he has been nice enough to create a pro and an amateur version. So for the people that want more of a challenge, you get to try and navigate the minefield that is the Glen Helen Hills. And for the people that want a little bit of an easier time, it'll be smoothened out for you. I today, however, I like a challenge. We'll be doing the rough stuff. And without further ado, let's spin some laps. For all of you passionate gamers, you can now get 20% off all G Fuel products worldwide by using code LINS at checkout. And for any of you motorheads looking for some new drip or apparel, use code MXPR underscore LINS15, fxrracing.eu to get 15% off. All links and codes are in the description down below. Enjoy the video and drop a cheeky little like and subscribe. I got given all of my final Supercross stuff last night as well. So this will be the bike that I'm rocking. And then I'm rocking my St. Jude gear which will run for the St. Jude's, I guess, I guess it's just gen, gen, general cancer awareness round. <clears throat> not not specific, like breast cancer, for example. But I, I just thought I'd rock this for today because I just like the look of it. I think it's very, very cool. Uh, I am going to go back into first person, however, and we'll spin some laps around here. I'm probably going to crash a few times when I try and start going a little bit faster. And the biggest thing that I'm going to have to try and learn on this track is where the particularly big braking bumps are. Because as you're coming down these hills, you actually have to brake, which is quite nice. Another reason why I really like this track is you can't just hit the downhill wide open and then get sunk into a super deep rut. You have to pick your way through. You've got to take your time a little bit. And thank God, by the way, that uh, the OEM bikes have figured out the, like the uphill slash front end physics. Because I don't think this track would be possible on old versions. It's only because these bikes are a lot more stable now going up and down hills and off cambers that we can even play this track. So you've got sections like this where you can try and jump off some of the braking bumps as well as you can, skip some of them out. Try and uh, channel your inner Jet Lawrence and be as smooth as possible, not waste any energy. This little jump up to the top of this hill, oh my god is it satisfying. Absolutely love that. This downhill is pretty damn brutal, so I'm going to take my time, going to change down the gearbox, lean off the back a little bit, trail brake on the way down, and then try and accelerate back up. Now, this, as I said in the intro, this is the 2007 version of this track. I was not really into my AMA motocross back then. So I don't have like good or fond memories of these like really, really old layouts or old tracks in general. So this is all new to me. I'm kind of experiencing this all for the first time. I know for it, however, hang on, try and hit a naughty oppo here. That was not a naughty oppo, oh, it was just a regular whip. Um, I know, however, there's probably gonna be a bunch of you in the comments here, some of you older boys as well, or maybe even some that aren't that old, they just have good memories of going and watching the racing here or getting to ride here when the tracks were like this and i know in at least the couple of the last years of the glen helen races i noticed that glen helen always seemed to be one of the most like beat up and brutal tracks to race on by the end of the day and i know that motocross these days they are leaning more towards like a safety side of things so there's less risk to the pro riders hurting themselves and but, i mean as a spectator you have to love when the tracks get super beaten up and it's an actual like difficult challenge for the riders. They have to pick their way through and not just hit things wide open. That's my favourite sort of riding in-game, at least. I know it sounds sad to try and compare one to the other. I'm not trying to do that. Uh, I'm just saying in-game, because I'm not really much of a, a hot lapper these days, the only thing that I'm semi-decent at is when tracks get like quite highly eroded, I can just pick my way around the track. And a lot of the time it's so much more beneficial just to take your time lose maybe half a second here half a second there and not crash and it is to try and absolutely send it everywhere crash and lose like four or five seconds of time uh, i think that's just old man brain 
to be honest, rather than young hot lap of brain. And that's exactly how I'm going to try and approach the 2024 Supercross season is just try and pick my way through, try and get as clean a start as possible, tuck underneath on the inside of everyone, and then just ride my own race. If there's someone behind me who is quite clearly faster than me, by all means, you go through, you take that position. And if you disappear off into the sunset, cool for you, you deserve it. If you're in front of me for a lap and crash and I go past again, then W for me. That's my uh, that's my game plan. So I, I really do enjoy stuff like this. I am aware that this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. I have not seen how rough the amateur version is. However, I do know that it's nowhere near as rough as this is. So if you are newer to the game and you don't want to face a challenge like this, then that is there for you to do so. Um, it is on the shop. Unfortunately, that usually means that you're not going to get many public lobbies on tracks like this. Although, if I have the chance in the near future, I'll definitely try and do a public lobby on it myself. We can try and get a, a lobby of players going and get a race on it. Because I'd love to see how it erodes with a bunch of uh, people as well. Because th this game's weird with a road sometimes. Sometimes it makes the track brutal, and then other times it actually smoothens some of the uh, the bumps out and makes it easier for you. I just got very lucky with where I downsided that bump. I think uh, if you was to grind this track out a bit, you'd probably find all the places where you can kind of land within a braking bump and then pop out of it again and just carry your momentum around the whole track. I was trying to see if there was any way of sending this and clearing the finish line. And I feel like if you hit it in just the right part, it might be doable, but I'm not going to waste my time doing that today. But yeah, in terms of getting to ride this track online, it would be very, very nice. Um, unfortunately, as I say, pay tracks, they don't get a whole lot of love in public service these days. And even still, with Supercross around the corner, well, I say around the corner, it's today when you're watching this. Um, I see one or two Supercross servers, really. And then other than that, it's still the standard forest and, and stuff. So the, the game is the game at this point. And I'm... Getting a bit, I guess, fed up of seeing people trying to spread their anti pay track hate in every single video that I do on pay tracks now. It's not going to change my content at all. I'm going to still enjoy the tracks that I enjoy playing. And again, I'm just the final word in it all is no one is forcing you to buy these things. The reason you buy them is because you want to play them yourself. You don't, you shouldn't have to rely on servers to do so. Like, I think tracks like this, absolutely brilliant in getting you to practice the game. Like, Throw yourself in at the deep end, try and master the bikes as best as you can. Now is the best time ever to really try and learn and perfect the game because the bikes are as capable as they'll ever be. Going down some of these hills, the way that I've been kicked about in some of the rough stuff where I've been going a little bit too fast, I would never have survived on the older bikes. So these bikes definitely help you uh, survive a lot more than you used to be able to suspension wise. And oddly enough, I'm using the same suspension right now as I'm going to be for Supercross. And that, this suspension does really treat me quite well in the whoops, so I'm guessing that kind of carries over to these like really sharp braking bumps. I should probably try some other lines as well. Let's try going down to the outside around here. There we go. Uh, one thing that you probably could do as well on the track if you wanted to kind of get more of, a, like, I don't know, like sun in your eyes, like end of the day Glen Helen vibes, is probably just mess with your reshading a little bit. I've got a very, very basic reshade at the moment where it just brightens things up a little bit and then adds like an extra anti-aliasing effect to kind of smooth up the edges of everything but i'm i'm such a big fan of this i did uh so i only found out that this track got released today because i saw reaper like saying well done to jv in uh, a separate discord so i went and had a look at it i rode around the entire track i've been looking at the banners on the left looking at the banners on the right and i was like jv where's where's the lins banners N no video no no video now there's no lins banners anywhere uh but I then found out you, it's uh, all the banners of people that sponsored the MX Bikes GP series earlier in 2023. So that's why. So note, note self, don't be a cheapskate. <laughs> Support people that need it. I did not. Uh, I did not. Oh, I did not become a sponsor of that. Now, one thing that could be cool in the future. I know, obviously, this track's all said and done now. Um, but there was another uh, Glen Helen done at some point by G Dub and Bayer. And I think they mentioned that they was going to complete the whole thing eventually, but it's just never come to light. But off the left here, there is a Supercross track. You can't ride it because the map comes to an end, uh, but, and it's more just taken straight from like the uh, LiDAR scan slash Google Earth, whichever JV uses as his references. Um, but it would be nice to get like a full Glen Helen compound at some point of every track, and even using some of like the hills, because don't they do some weird like enduro stuff from time to time as well? I imagine that the track size would be absolutely huge, and I'm not... Well, I was actually I was going to say, I'm not sure if there are any like track size limits in this game, but 
we have we have Krakenberg, and that's absolutely massive. So I'm guessing it could be a little bit bigger. But then, of course, when you start adding like this amount of detail to the tracks, I'm not sure like what K height map he uses, but there's a lot of detail going on. I did even notice that the flag here is like floating in the wind or flopping about in the wind as well, which is quite cool. Enough a little little bit of detail, and it's just hella pretty. Like sitting at the top of the map here as well, and looking down at everything, it's so so cool. I I, I love it. I, I like Glen Helen anyway. I, I I do wish that they still race there. But, you know, if I don't come out and win Anaheim 1 now, uh, today, when you're watching this, we can all just blame JV. He's taken my attention away from the Supercross grind. I've done the bare minimum amount of outdoors. This will probably be about 15 minutes or so long. Uh, I'll probably get off the game after this, to be fair. I've already played the game for about an hour or two today. Maybe I'll stream a bit later tonight. We shall see. Um, but whenever you are watching this, bear in mind that a couple of hours after this video goes live... Actually, can I, can I triple this? Mm, that's a little bit of a stretch. Uh, yeah, bear in mind, a couple of hours after this video goes live, I will be streaming Anaheim 1. Now, it's just going to be the 450 point of view. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing during the 250 race just yet. We'll, uh, we'll kind of tackle that as we get there. But I hope you can stop by and enjoy it. As I said a few times now, it's always been my best stream of the year. So I'm hoping we can, we can do that again and just have a good time all around. And just cross my fingers and hope that, firstly, that I make it in. Then if I do make it in, just have a good solid result. I mean, top five will do me quite fine. I'll be happy man with that. And I'm just, I feel a lot more, I guess, relaxed this year in terms of how I'm playing the game. I just seem to not get quite as frustrated at my mistakes or when I do crash or get into someone, I'm taking a bit more responsibility myself rather than just blaming everyone else all the time. Because it's that's the easiest thing to do is if you get to someone, it's like you can blame them. But obviously with net code and, and things like that, they might have not even seen you in the first place and... It's down to you at the end of the day to make sure you don't crash. So sometimes you can only do so much. Sometimes there'll be a stray bike that runs into you and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, but a lot of the time you can take evasive manoeuvres or just not be so aggressive around other riders and give people room and rest in peace me. Now I guarantee that the tracks won't be as rough for the 2024 outdoor season. But this this does give you a little bit of an insight in towards what JV slash Stone Rider slash Hell Machine will all be cooking up for us because they're all doing both the GPs as well as the AMA season next year. So I think we're finally going to get some very, very top tier AMA tracks, which will be nice because uh, the GP tracks have been my favourite outdoors tracks in the game. I just like the style and how they're built. And I just think it's going to be so much fun having that style of track applied to like a Red Bud or a Millville or a Southwick. And that just really excites me. And I think a lot of the time, the, at least the American community, I know a lot of you guys just don't care about GPs at all. I mean, I don't care about them in real life. They don't really interest me anymore. Um, but in game, I think people just don't bother with them because of their lack of interest in real life. But they're really, really good tracks. I, I, I don't think I've heard many negative comments at all about any of the GP tracks from last season. So I'm excited. I think 2024, in terms of like racing, and the competitive side of things, although we've got a little bit of region locking controversy going on right now, I think the racing will be in its healthiest state that it ever has been. And I think people are going to really enjoy the tracks. I certainly, uh, I'm pretty sure that I am anyway. And I'm just going to just try and enjoy it for what it is and not get so caught up in the actual racing side of things. They're long series, you know, like 17 rounds of indoors. I have no idea how long the GP's going to be this year. But there's no point having one or two bad rounds and just getting like really really fuming over it because a lot of the time not everyone does every round anyway so you gain a lot of points in that regards but there's nothing you can do about it at the end of the day sometimes you just have to get lucky especially in supercross uh, if you get a good start in supercross and have a clean first three laps I, there's a high chance that you don't finish outside the top five because it's so hard to come back and i've done a couple races actually over the last uh, few days with people on the supercross tracks and everyone's running such equal times to each other i, I don't know if that's just because the tracks that we've been playing have been out for a while now so people have kind of mastered them but I, i've done a, f a few races literally last night with like chicken dad shoes aiden reese and it was it, it's hard it was very very intense because we were all like exactly the same speed and no one was making mistakes so for like we was doing like eight minute plus one so that, they're short races little sprints but my god were they intense races and I think Anaheim 1's going to be a bit of a shock to the system for me as well, because I've not been in races that intense for a while, and my fingers are like, all get all cramped up and horrible, but 
Uh, I'm I'm quietly confident. Not in qualifying time, but in in race time, I'm quietly confident. So I feel quite quite comfortable on this bike now. Uh, I think I've got my suspension now to a point where I'm happy with it. I know what it's going to do. I know how to handle different situations. And the only thing that I think is a bit of a guessing game for me right now is what the whoop section is going to be like on Anaheim 1. Because there's two whoop sections back to back. I don't know if they're going to be as deep as like the aerial test track whoops. Or kind of like the, the Reaper Dock whoops as well. They're, they're quite steep if you'd call them a whoop section. Or if they'll be a little bit more forgiving, maybe, like the whoops on the Rust track that Stone Rider release as well. We shall see. That's the only uh, the only variable for me at this point. I'm quietly confident for the rest of it. So it should go well. Uh, this track is incredible for me. Again, this I am just one man. I have an opinion. Everybody else probably won't like how rough this is. It was the same as um, Jesse Mullock released a Urn A track. Uh, I, think, I believe it was towards the start of last year. Which I loved. Like it was 2015 version of Erne. Super rough, super rutty, very, very challenging. I really enjoyed it, and everyone else at the time was just complaining because it was too difficult for them. Uh, so, as all of the uh, the young Fortnite gamers say these days, when you do find something difficult, uh, skill issue and get good at the end of the day. That's all there is to it. So, uh, that'll do it for me. I hope you've enjoyed. JV, thank you very, very much for making this. I'm actually so excited now for uh, getting some hot, top quality. Uh, AMA Outdoors Tracks as well in 2024 and just keep doing what you're doing as always that'll do it for me I hope you guys have enjoyed please do drop a like and possibly subscribe to the channel if you're new and you enjoy what you see and have a lovely rest of the day whatever you're up to I'll catch you all in the next video peace